Your job needs you, not the other way around. Remember that when your work self tries to resign. Death just might be your only way out in episode 4 of the hit TV show Severance. Hello and welcome to The Road Goes Ever On and On. Here we take resignations very, very seriously. And if you would like to stay on board with us, please hit that like and subscribe button. Turn on that bell for notifications. Disclaimer ahead, this episode talks about some pretty heavy topics. Spoilers ahead, and with that, let's talk about episode four of Severance. Sterling, what are your thoughts on episode four? I I don't feel like I necessarily got a ton of hidden stuff on this one. So I don't necessarily feel like I got a ton of hidden stuff on this one, but I did find a lot of kind of interesting questions right. that that this is raising. I The previous episodes, I feel like it did a good job of giving us questions, but also giving us answers. I feel like this one was a little bit slower paced, Yes, which was great. It's setting up some stuff, but it was giving us more questions than it was necessarily giving us answers and i think getting us some good setup for episodes to come what did you think you know same thing i did think this was a little bit slower like you were saying but i feel like there was a lot of good character moments as well in this this episode you know i feel like we saw a lot of you know almost like inner battles for characters like heli basically fighting herself on the outside Mark fighting whether he's a rule follower to not get into the break room or if he is, you know, a rebel and like what that looks like. I feel like we saw a lot of that in this episode. In, in, interesting that you say Heli fighting herself, because if you if if somebody in the audience doesn't watch our shorts, they may not have seen your your latest short which was about the the fish and i right. thought that that was a brilliant discovery because so a lot of the things that i found are things that anybody can find and anybody can see that significance you know you just need to watch the episode 10 times and write down a bunch of things <laughs> and keep you know pausing but anybody can figure it out your detail took insider information of understanding what type of fish that is and information about that fish so will you repeat that briefly for anybody that yeah, Didn't see of, it? of course. So I had noticed that behind Mark at Mark's house, he had a fish tank. And in that fish tank are beta fish. And beta fish are very aggressive. You cannot keep beta fish together in a tank. Otherwise, they will attack each other. Basically, he has two beta fish in a tank. And there is a line down the middle that shows that they are separated. And I had taken this as that you know, is this a separation of Mark's work life and his outside life? And because of their aggressiveness towards each other, are they going to have a battle? And sure enough, Heli ha had a pretty big battle with herself. I did say that I thought Mark was going to have a battle with himself, which still might happen, but we definitely saw Heli have a, a, a conversation with her outside self, which is crazy. Right. And and it does seem like the the severance procedure may not be reversible because PD died. Right. So it, it does kind of point towards only one can live, you know, like that. That was kind of right. something that was brought up earlier, you know, as far as like if you resign, you're effectively killing your innie. You, you don't get these memories back. You don't this version of you that hates its life doesn't actually get out. Right. It just goes away. So it, I, that's, it, it's a brilliant detail. Absolutely brilliant. Tiny detail. And like, who's going to catch that? And this show is, is littered with those, you know, kind of going to, to my short for anybody that, that didn't cap, uh, catch that. I, there is such brilliant details in there that, you don't even notice right. like it wasn't until I was looking for screenshots for thumbnails, you know, so I can possibly use this. And as I was looking at one of the and I, I thought like the, the title sequence has great images in it and it's not really right. giving anything away by episode two. You've seen the title sequence. 
you know, so it's not really going to have any kind of spoilers on it. So it's like I can mine this for thumbnail information. And so I'm cra capturing uh, screenshots and I pause as I'm kind of looking at one to see the details. And that the, the fact that the one of them is moving forward, but as it moves forward, it's getting rid of its footprints in the right. snow. It's so tiny in there, you know, and it's. I don't know. So, so some of these details, I think, are, are, you know, concrete hints where it's like they're, they've planted seeds that will definitely pay off. And then oh, some yeah. of these details, like the fish one, are more metaphorical, I think. Right. You know, so it's, it's interesting. I think that that one is kind of metaphorical. I love that sequence because, like, that title sequence, when I, when I first saw it, I thought it was... A little bit uncanny valley you know because yeah. it's you know like cgi and so it was a, a little bit weird the first time i saw it but i also liked the visuals but it just grows on me every single time that i see it right same i noticed this time i so i've been watching it i watch it every time because I'm, I'm looking for certain details in it that might give something away one thing I notice, which I don't know if it means anything, but we see a couple versions of Mark in there. So we see him wearing a suit or his pajamas. And whenever we see him wearing a suit, he's smiling happily. Like he is enjoying himself. And every time we see him in the pajamas, he's looking concerned. So I wonder if... You know, I mean, I'm sure it's like any Mark versus outside Mark, and maybe it's showing that outside Mark is going to, f like, figure out this mystery of, of inside Mark. Now, the, oh, go ahead. The, the pajama version, by the way, also is wearing the key card, which only any Mark should have, because that is right. kept in in the locker, you know, so once he gets to the office... He goes to the locker, he goes ahead and grabs that key card, and that's what gives him access to the elevator, right. and I'm sure doors that he should have access to, because I think there are also, you know, different different job titles have different access. Like, when he got right. his promotion, he was given a, a different, different card. key card. So, he shouldn't... Jamie Mark shouldn't have Jamie. the key card. He doesn't belong there like that, right. that elevator light is red like i don't it, he doesn't belong right so speaking of key cards i feel like we saw a very in-depth look at well not in-depth but we got a better idea of what optics and design looks like and did you notice that their key cards are green i did not notice that so the uh, data refinement, they have the blue key cards and optics and design have green key cards. So, and, and we saw, which this is like probably the biggest question when Irv went to go see Bert and he opened up that room and it seemed like there were 10, 15 people in optics and design. It's, it's, I mean, we, we saw a number like that, but let's, uh, let's pay attention to the fact that there are all of these poles. You can't see how far back it goes. It goes right. back farther than, than the camera could see. I could count about 13 poles deep. And each of these is like a, a station, you know, that can, I don't know what, what you do there. Right. So it's at least 13 poles back. I believe it's, it's farther back than that. Who knows where exactly we are in this room, but we do know that we see these two columns of, of poles. Right. The ones on the left-hand side are E, and the ones on the right-hand side are F. So we have at least A through F poles like right. that we see and to the left. And who knows if it continues on to G and other letters. This room is enormous, and I love the fact that they gave us that little detail to let us know, to right. have, like, a, 
an idea that it is larger than what we see from like that little frame. Right. They're great with details. I love it. So what do, what do we think that room is? Do we think they're all part of optics and design? I have I I, I don't know, but they have gone to great lengths to make it seem like optics and design is a two person team down to, you know, even having like bump ins with O and D right. where they're doing team building, you know, where they're doing like the whole egg drop thing, you know, so it it really it is very clear that they don't want this information out. Who knows what that information is? Right. Because even not Bert, just they don't even Bert yeah. says when they first meet him, he said, you know, he asks him, he's like, oh, are you the lead of optics and design? And he's like, I'm barely a lead with two people. Like, yeah, I'm basically the lead. Like, so even he is saying that they are two people, a two person, two right. person team. It's it's wild. So that's that's one of the questions that that I have where it just kind of opened up a question. It's interesting that they are working so hard to obscure that. I mean, it, it's very clear that there's they're working very hard to control information. You know, right. outside literature is not allowed. You're not allowed to make maps of the place, so you can't, you know, if you can start to map things out, you could figure out where where boundaries are and see, you know, even if you don't see a door to this room, you would be able to see that like, oh, these walls that I've gone around right. clearly hold a space of this size. There's something in here that I'm not aware of. I think that having maps would make it easier to kind of see that information. So they're really doing a lot to control. And it's, it's interesting, like even down to the art, it's interesting that the right. art in this place has a message you know we, right. we learned that that here speaks not just through like the handbooks through but the also art. through the art and it's hinted that he somehow is able to speak through other methods right do you think it maybe That's, is the chip i don't know well so it's, it's just like i i feel that this episode i feel like i don't necessarily have a ton of concrete information and i just have this is like questions the episode you know where right, it's right. just brought up question after question they're interesting questions oh yeah the um so i really the, like this quote here where it's like the original word of kier and i shall whisper to ye dutifully through the ages in your noblest thoughts and epiphanies shall be my voice you are my mouth and through ye i shall whisper on when i am 10 centuries demise Irv says, I don't understand. Bert says, he doesn't just speak to us through the handbook or the paintings. He finds other ways. I, I think it's interesting the part where it says, you are my mouth. Right. And through ye, I will whisper on when I'm 10 centuries demise. Right. It, it seems like here still has so much impact. All of the workers... All of the workers are Horcruxes, and they have a piece of Kirigan in him. <laughs> They're all Horcruxes. You got to kill them all to get rid of Kirigan. He's got a piece of him in, inside of all of them. And I wonder if, if Lumen has a piece of each worker inside of the chip. Yes. Because it seemed like Miss Cobell right. wanted that chip back really badly, and I don't think it was like... We don't want somebody to find this and, you know, right. and be able to look at it. It was like, because she wanted it to get it back to like processing, right. I think to take information off of it. So is this not just severing, but also storing information? You know, are they able to, I, do, does this have radio transmitters? Like, can this transmit that right. information? when they're down there or do they have to wait until they're dead to collect like it i have so many questions because grainer did say that the funeral was this day and he was going to be cremated meaning the chip was going to be destroyed right what i found interesting was grainer also said this is not our fault 
to Cobell. He said, this is not our fault. What was not their fault? Like, there's there's something that we're right. going to get with, with Petey and how they... Something they did with Petey that made him start this journey of creating right. the maps. Which, one more thing about the maps. I did find this episode cool because the one place he didn't know where it was was optics and design and today we got a map of how to get to optics and design so if pd had held on a little bit longer he could have had a a little maze to optics and design yeah. and, and, and this is the episode that mark had the map and he destroyed the map i know that was heartbreaking kelly is just pushing and pushing and so that you know the, the the interesting thing is i it feels like the way that heli is pushing is forcing mark to be this person he doesn't want to be he doesn't like he would like to be a, a fun guy that can enjoy work with everybody right and isn't like he, he's not an irv where he brings up every single rule you know and follows them perfectly to a t and points it out to other people but he knows how bad things can get. He knows that he is technically in charge. And so it's forcing him into this position where he's having to be the rule guy. Right. And it's sad because I, I like him and I don't... I, I, he, I, he doesn't want it. I don't want him to, to do it. There, there was this beautiful framing device in this episode where they find the book when Mark finds Rickon's book. And I thought this was... Like, this is what I like about, like, the design. Where he is, you know, debating whether to, like, take this book, to tell Milchek what to do with it. And we have Dylan on one side and Irv on the other side. So, like, the angel and devil on your shoulder, and they're right over his shoulders, too. So, like, Dylan's right. like, yeah, do it. You know, this is contraband, you know, like, read it. Does it right. have my name in there? And Irv's like, no, no, no. We have to take it to Milchek. Like, we can't have any outside books. So I thought that was a very nice little framing device that they had. They're they're great with, with that kind of stuff. The shot where Irv finds the book. I love the the choice of the camera angles, when he pauses and just looks and kind of is is disturbed and it just sits on that moment for for a little bit and you wonder what he sees and then finally he goes into the room and the shot is from the perspective of the book which is super low yeah and so it's looking up at irv as he's kind of looking in horror and it just it pulls you in you want to know what he sees and this shot is such a beautiful shot of of his face from such an interesting angle that you're like, what, what right. could he possibly be looking at? I love the fact that it's from the perspective of the book. Similarly, you know, when, uh, you know, when Mark is looking at material that he shouldn't be looking at, he's doing it in the, the restroom and they specifically are doing these kind of unsettling voyeuristic shots from above right. the stalls, you know, like that's, a perspective that you don't and the first time it does it the camera actually pans over a number of stalls so it's like empty stall empty stall and then you see right mark in there and it just cinematography it, like that is really cool really interesting choices i i love how they do this stuff i i agree i think that this is very for having such a simplistic set or or you know background or wherever they're going this show takes really good care of the characters the imagery what we're seeing the the feeling of suspense i think that they're really also good at making work mark and outside mark look very different even though they look the same like we saw mark at a funeral okay. in this episode in a suit but he still doesn't look like work mark. And same with Mrs. Selvig Cobell. Like, when she's outside, she looks like this. You know, she's got her hair up. She's got this, like, giant coat that's 
knitted out of wool and you know right. at the office she's got her hair down she's always in a suit like she always looks put together and i think that that's very cool how they have made him look so different even mark just like he always his eyes always look heavy and dark when he's on the outside and on the inside he looks peppy and excited to be there right but but at the same time we still know that that they still carry their other self you know because of what what pd said so even even if he has this kind of happier appearance you know people that know him closely can tell that there's still something else going on and i think that kind of goes back to that title sequence where we see you know one of the the marks on the outside is is carrying this like ballooned mark with many arms and legs and it gives him a weird walk and then the very next scene we see all the marks going through doorways and they all have that same weird walk the before i was like pouring over that title sequence i just thought that was a really weird walk because without the like balloon thing that you're dragging there's no reason to have that movement and so when i put those two together it's like they they all have that right we just don't see it you right. know and it's it's just like them being severed where they they don't actually have the memories we saw it uh in this episode yes at the I very was, end i was just he gonna say the tree right it's it's in there it's 100 yes. percent it's still there. They definitely carry it, even if they don't know right. how to access it. You know, and and Mrs. Selvig was was so brilliant with her choice of evil, but brilliant with her choice of like taking that candle that was Mark's wife's. So that's what I was gonna and ask then because putting I feel it in like, there and burning it. Well, so this is what I'm confused by, right? Because. I don't remember her taking the candle. I remember her looking at the candle, but I don't remember her taking it. And didn't Mark look at that candle at one point? I think before her, he had looked looked at the candle. But it makes me think that he would look at that candle so he would know it would be missing. So I'm wondering if, like, she made multiple candles and they have one. Like, I just, the fact that they had that candle was weird to me. I think she took it because I, I I remember her. I don't know if she put it in her bag like she did the book, but I did think I saw her like take it out and then close the box and put the box hmm. back. Okay. So it it very much seemed like she wasn't putting the candle back, which to me insinuated that she she took the candle, um, and then seeing it this time, I mean you know with with how bad his life is kind of crumbling on the outside with like the crippling alcoholism right who knows if I'm, I'm sure he would notice that it's missing but i wouldn't be surprised if he just blamed drunk mark which almost is like a mm, third mark yes. that like who knows what drunk mark does like he he probably wakes up from like blacked out sessions and yeah. doesn't remember what he necessarily did at the end of the night, you know? So you could argue that there are, like, three marks. Right. Yeah. What What about the therapist? Casey. Miss Casey. Uh, she's, Miss Kate, exactly. She's another one of the ones, like, that's not a, a first-name person. She's a last-name person. So I, I think she might be one of the... Well, but Casey can be know, a first name. And it could just be... But it's Miss Casey. But it could... I, I know. I'm, I'm debating if she's severed or not. My I'm, I'm sticking with my theory. If we use Mr. and Miss, then you're, you're not severed. And it's not like Miss, Miss Coble even hides the fact that she's not severed because she openly said... You know, my mother was a carpenter, uh, an atheist. Or, or an atheist. Yeah, yeah. She says that on the inside, which is information that she shouldn't have if she's severed. Right, right. So that's showing that she isn't severed. Do you? Uh, she's okay. probably lying about that information, but it it's it that to me points that 
she is not severed and she is not hiding that she's not severed right i think we saw her look at the picture as she was saying the i think it's the nine or twelve you know parables of of egan and she looks at that picture is she an egan was she looking at her great grandfather egan and she is trying to be the next CEO of Egan. It's a good question. I don't know. I, she's not. I I don't know. And I, I, I still think that Petey had some help from somebody yes. that would have access to like the the recordings. Right. So I I think that she could possibly be trying to help. I think somebody is. Somebody and, is. But there there are so many like recording devices. Right. That you whoever it is would still have to play the part of, you know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So they would have to be very careful to not give up their cover. See, I d- here's the thing. We see, like, Mark, we see Dylan, Heli. They talk about things pretty openly. Like, they, they look at the map while sitting at the desk, even though, you know, they have... He was reading it in the bathroom. But there, we know that there are cameras in that room. And it does seem like that they, you know, when they found the book, there's a camera in that room. Like, there are these cameras there, and I don't know how much they are watching. To me, watching Miss Cobell do that, saying those things, was her, you know, is her trying to... I think she's trying to rise in the ranks in okay. in Lumen. Let's, let's go back to a previous episode and I just want to add a little bit of extra information that I didn't catch until I was working on thumbnails and I thought it was really good information. So you you know my my theory that the work that they're doing, the macro data refining, that Mm -hmm. each of those, my theory is each of the files is a person and they are they're the they're sorting the four I've already forgotten what it is but whatever the, the, the four things taming the tempers the four tempers the, the four tempers okay so they're they're, they're sorting the, the the four tempers and you know organizing them into the the four boxes and each of the four tempers you know we know that one of them elicits fear and there is a fear based temper I don't remember exactly what it's called but what I thought was interesting was like I thought that they were measuring those, like sorting them and measuring them. And you know, because there was part of the quote that made it seem like if you could if you can precisely measure those that you can basically kind of like define what a person was. Right. So I thought that it was like maybe trying to distill the essence of a person by measuring those four tempers. But what I thought was interesting was as I was going over some of the footage in order to come up with a thumbnail, in the second episode, uh, Heli is looking at like a training handbook. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of words printed in that, that the, the, the camera doesn't pause on it long enough that you can read it without actually freezing the frame. But if you freeze the frame, there's really interesting information here. So let me go ahead and read this to you it says i can't see the the kind of bold headline because it's uh cropped out diagonally it's explaining like what they do with their job and it says something pure more usable and more accessible whether it's the oil industry the sugar industry or our industry as a lumen refiner you'll be removing impurities from data and reorganizing that data into its purest form 
You've been selected for this position because we recognize in you both the intuition and emotional intelligence to perform these tasks quickly, efficiently, and most importantly, reliably. Essentially, a macro data refiner sorts data sets from different categories into digital bins, a task which requires immense skill and focus. The part that I thought was the most interesting is the, the part about as a lumen refiner, you'll be removing impurities from data and reorganizing that data into its purest form. So are they removing these tempers, which does kind of say that, like Egan said, that he tamed his tempers. Right. Is that your way of saying, like, you you, you figure out all of that and you get rid of I don't know. It's, But I, I do think that they are doing this with people, and I don't know why or what it does. The only thing that might poke a hole in in your thing that i had noticed today or on this episode the there's five boxes down at the bottom not four that's i i know i saw that when i was watching the episode i was like oh there's five boxes there's one in the middle and there's two on each side so i was like so that I, I like where that head's at. And maybe maybe the the fifth box is everything that's not the tempers. You know, so there's the four tempers and then everything that's not the tempers, and you're reorganizing it into the, the better right. thing. So I, I still think it it has to do with the data refinement and, and same with all four of the, the characters. You know, originally though I I can't remember the four we talked about. There was like one, it was like the malevolence or something or that we didn't know who that was and now i'm thinking more that that was heli she's the one that's like fight like fighting and and being aggressive to get out of there but and you know we talked i think frolic was was dylan so i i still think that that has something to do with the tempers but i don't know what and i i still don't know and now seeing everything on optics and design that have all these machines that are different machines that are doing something. The other thing about optics and design is everybody in data refinement wears a suit jacket. Everybody in optics and designs wears a lumen coat that says lumen on it. And I don't know if they are part of the bigger scheme, which makes me feel like they are, even though Bert talked about in this one that he was napping or that he is severed. He's like, I, my guy must sleep 15 hours on the outside because I'm, I'm always rejuvenated where Irv is talking about he's sleeping. Right. Okay. So let's briefly talk about okay. the, Let's briefly talk about the scene where Heli is getting, uh, she's in the break room. Okay, yes, yes. I don't have an answer to this. Right. I just have the question of, and she had the same question, so I'm not even being all that original. Who is that voice? What did she hear? And also, why is it that different people hear something different and also, and I think I know the answer to the last one, why can't they talk about it? And I, I think the why can't they talk about it is similar to like why they can't have maps and why they can't have outside material right. where they don't, they want to limit the information that people can have and share because then people can possibly find out things they shouldn't know. Right. But that to me is like wild that they now, all hear something different. What's crazy is we've heard this before. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. You might okay. have to go back an episode. Uh, Yeah, go back one episode. Okay. The, there is a part where Harmony is being interrogated by the, the person. I can't remember her name where she comes down and she's asking Harmony. She puts the board in front of her. When yes. she she has a headset on, the girl or someone does. Okay. You can hear that same mumbling when she they are talking to her. And I had picked it up the first time when I had watched it. And I was like, what is that noise? And I'm, I thought it was just 
somebody through the headset communicating to her, but I thought it was odd that we could hear it. And then I heard the, we hear the mumbling in this episode, and Heli says, what is that mumbling noise? So I thought it was interesting that we did hear this mumbling before when they were talking to Harmony. Is that the board? I don't know. Because the, the, then why would why would Dylan, Dylan hear... be hearing what a crying baby? Yeah. Or whatever it was. And what what does Mark hear? What does Irving hear? You know, right. it's what did Petey hear? Yeah. So it's is it psychological that they're hearing that thing? Because Heli seemed to think it was on the other side of the door. I think it's psychological. I think like okay. I think that's part of why Mr. Milchik has the the headphones on, you know, or Mr. Milchik is maybe he's getting piped in the the board or somebody else, you know, that that's like right, you know, she's she's not ready yet. Do it again, you right. know. Who knows? Who knows whether or not he is blocking something out using kind of like filtering headphones. Or is he getting information that she isn't privy to? Who knows? Because they, they haven't told us. It's what if I, I love the show. What if it's Helly's Audi's voice trying to communicate to her during that time? You know, like her inner monologue almost when she's like <laughs> But that wouldn't make sense with the whole whole thing that seeing it beforehand with harmony so that doesn't yeah quite make i don't know sense. i i love by the way the the last scene because the the episode i felt like it was much slower pacing right in this one and then at the end it's it wasn't necessarily faster but it's building to all these questions and all this right. kind of intrigue and instead of giving us there's basically like four or five scenes all being weaved together, you know, about like two to three seconds of each scene where you see, you know, it goes between these different characters. And I love the way that that was weaved because it really amps up the the anticipation of what's going to happen and also right. makes them all crescendo at the same time yes. instead of separating this into you know, five scenes and each one has its own little crescendo. And then we do the next one and that one crescendos. Like instead, I think it amplifies the wave because they're all building at the same time right. and they all kind of crescendo at the same time. And I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Loved it. Hearing Dylan's voice over uh, reading the book as he's he's spelling out destiny and what it means and it's right. cutting to each of the the main players of of what they're doing. We kind of don't know what Helly's doing yet. We have an idea right. when, when we first see her. We see Mark sculpting the clay, but we don't know what he's going to sculpt. He starts sculpting the tree. Very right. It was it was a very good ending to this a little bit slower episode. I thought. Even even with the slower moment, I don't feel like it's a, a bad episode or a slow episode or a filler episode. Sometimes, right. you know, shows will slow down in the middle. Sometimes it'll feel like they have filler. This didn't feel like that. It just didn't feel like it was action-packed. But it still, for me, was suspenseful and still made me want to... Yes. There is part of me that is bummed that we're going over this with uh, for for YouTube because I just want to watch the next I episode know, so I badly. Know, I know, I'm the uh, same way. <laughs> but this is, this is why we do this. We wait a week, I, and that's what makes it so good. I promise you that now that we're talking about this episode today, mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I are going to watch the next episode today because we're finally, it's, it's taped. Finally we can finally up. do that. It will happen today that's funny um and luckily because we're a little bit behind on you know the audience won't know this because they're they're not uh you know they're not knowing when we record these but right. because we're a little bit behind on recording this episode it means that 
the next recording is coming right up and I get to watch the next episode sooner. Yes. So it's like two episodes within less than a week. I'm extremely excited about this. I love That's this so show. That's so funny. I, I do too. The one final thing that I want to talk about is a training term. So you had mentioned early on about how they like brainwash them. It's it's very cult like, you know, we saw in this episode yeah. they have the they talk about the the books that he passed down, they talk about the messages in the painting, the messages through his voice. So there is a training term that is called learned helplessness. And this was discovered by they had they were doing this test with a rat in a cage and they would electrify the cage and they had given the rat ways to get out of the cage originally to stop the electrocutions now what they learned is that through learned helplessness if an animal figures out that it cannot get out of its situation so they put it in a cage that was electrocuting it that there was no escape from that eventually the animal will just give up like it is called learn helplessness that the, even though it's getting shocked it's not trying to escape it's not trying to do anything it has learned that there's no escape we can't get out and it just basically has given given into death essentially and just letting itself be electrocuted i think that you know we saw demonstrated in this episode especially with like mark talking about the break room of like how bad it is and it's like we can't get out of here like just like we saw heli trying to get out we can't get out of here they have basically trained learned helplessness into these employees right which makes it a lot easier to manage it because you know, I, I assume that they don't have too many employees coming in, at, like new employees coming in around the same time. So they kind of only have to handle that about an employee at a time. Right. Of like, you know, have the break room happen at some point, you know, deal with these different things. And then once that person is broken, essentially, yeah. you know, once they've, you know, once that learned helplessness has happened you don't have to worry about that one anymore right. because I'm, I'm sure if they had a concerted plan, if they, if they did some kind of like uprising that they could maybe through mass figure out a way to game the system. Right. But they've just given up. And so because of that, you know, as, as individuals they've given up and so they've lost the power that a group could possibly have. Right. Right. Yeah, Even though Optics and, Optics and Design has started a coup, and now seeing how many people there are in Optics and Design seems like that is a reasonable thing to happen. But also, Optics and Design, they might have inside information. So Macro Data Refining didn't know where Optics and Design was, but Optics and Design did know where Macro Data Refining was, and was able to do something he shouldn't have, put together a map, at least from one room to another right. room. You know, so it seems like they've got some... I mean, if, if they're putting up art in the whole place, I guess they might have to have it kind of mapped, mapped out. out. I don't know. Hmm. There's such so many questions. Who makes this art, too? That's what I want to know. Who is making this art? Where is this art coming from? And they have a right. shit ton of it that just cycles through the whole thing and then comes right back to optics and design. Right. Man. And it's interesting, the, the, the art and its placement, like the one about, you know, the water of Kier or whatever, you know, being at the, the, the water fountain. Right. You know, that, he, like, he hydrates us to some extent. Right. It's, it's everything is, is, like, programming and... It's wild. I am so excited about getting to the end of the season and then not excited about waiting for season two. I'm glad right. that it's less than a year because we didn't get into it in real time. Yep. But I'm I'm super excited about this show. Same. 
Awesome. And with that, I think uh, to find out about the next episode, you'll have to join us next week on Monday. We'll be talking about the next episode. We'll be having fun with it then. And we hope to see you then. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks.